So, Stefano is ready. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Thank you. Hello, thank you for having me here. And uh, if we can start with the slides. I, I had a beautiful background of a cover of Fine Young Cannibals, but I, I needed to have uh, permission to come here in order to talk about these things from my political group. I had to put the logo of the group on, on top of it. Okay, and that explains. I have been asked by David to talk about the resistance that you face in politics in the government uh, toward change, and this is uh, what I'm going to talk about. Uh, I'm, suppo I'm supposed to talk about 25 minutes, but I'm going to be shorter, and then I would like to have the interaction with you, so I'm just going to give a briefly talk. By the way, the view is magnificent. I just arrived and... Uh, <laughs> okay, we should start from here. What's a democracy? What's a democracy? I mean, that, so does some of you think that democracy is not a good system or there might be better systems than a democracy? Who, yeah. Okay, how many of you think that there are better systems than democracy? Good, five people. I'm just hiding their hands. The vast majority of us thinks that democracy is a good system. A democracy is a system of government in which all the people of a state or a polite are involved in making decisions about its affairs, typically by voting to elect representatives to a parliament or similar assembly. This, this comes from the Oxford English with double L, sorry for the type of dictionary. Okay, it's people making decisions through, generally through representatives. Okay, this is how things work. Voting to elect representatives and then these representatives vote. There are two key elements, a political system for choosing and replacing the government through free and fair elections. I'm always puzzled by the word political. It's two years I'm in, in the Chamber of Deputies, I still don't understand what political means. When, when they say, when you cannot enter into the detail of the topic, you say it's a political issue. So it's a, it, it's a political, there is a political reason. Meaning that really the, the, the confrontation between parties and parties are a group of people. And then the active participation of the people as citizens in politics and civic life. These are the two key elements of a democracy. Election, so all the people say that are involved in making a decision about typically by voting to elect representatives. Election is a formal decision making process by which population chooses an individual to hold public office. So the key is the power of decision is to, up to the people. It's people who decide through a formal decision-making process. Good. But who is the people? Uh, the average Joe. Uh, who, 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 who is not from Italy? From uh, yeah. Okay. The Casalinga de Voghera. So I'm going to explain. <laughs> I have to explain. Well, are you all familiar with the concept of the Casalinga di Voghera? It's a key, it's a, it's a key concept. Casalinga di Voghera is the average Joe in Italy. So the average person in Italy was middle-aged, uh, working as a housekeeper, homekeeper in, in a small town called uh, Voghera. And that's the average voter. That, that, that's, it's her who is the average voter. It's there making the election, participating to the election in order to elect representatives. And so the, the information base that the voters have is, the, is, is led by the, the Casalinga de Bulgaria people, that kind of people. And how do these voters decide? This is a famous advertising, no? I, I guess all of you know it. Would you buy a, a used car from this man? And, and think of it as a political message. There was nothing, no talk about what's in the program, what, what values, what vision of the future, what, what vision of the things to do, what actions about his past, nothing. It's just his face saying that you cannot trust this guy. Nothing relates with anything that's related to the facts. 
Nothing is related to the fact. It's just poor gut feeling. Then, then, so the political process, the election process, is heavily influenced by gut feelings. And it's then determining who is going to be uh, in, in power. And how do the other, how does the other Joe get his feelings? How does the, the Casalinga de Voguera get his, her information? And, uh, uh, and how can we influence her in, through media? Through media. Media is what tells them what to think. And here again, it's not related to facts. Facts are boring. Facts are boring. Facts are for an elite. Data is for an elite of people. It's not for the other Joe. We need entertainment. I mean, I have all these problems. I don't want to think about complicated issues. I just want to be entertained. Seeing people that fight against, that fight against each other, like in wrestling, it's, it's OK. It's entertaining. So the power of ideas is nothing to deal, nothing to have with a big part of the population. Then there was this recent uh, paper by Robert Epstein, uh, who studied a number of elections worldwide and argued that about 20% of the political elections worldwide could have been decided by shifting a small a number of swing votes from one candidate to the other through the kind of messages that can be uh, delivered to the people through uh, Google searches. So if you search for a person and, you want, and, and the first facts that appear on the top three items are negative, you are going to be negatively impressed and that candidate is true. So this is how, how democracy works. Everybody has the right to express his opinion. Everybody has the right to determine who is going to be elected. And all these persons get informed uh, or not informed or uninformed or misinformed in different ways. This is what I was supposed to talk about. And I almost covered all of it. What are the challenges of legislation of time of accelerating technology change? Well, technological change. Uh, laws are, are made in the parliament. And we don't start from scratch. We start from where we stand. Uh, we are often told about the wonders of Estonia, for example. You know, and people tell us about Estonia. Estonia is as large as Trentino Alto Adige, and the level, which is another region in Italy, a small region in Italy. And the level of digitization of the process of the, the users, the, the, the services to the citizens in, in Trentino Alto Adige is pretty much comparable, I would say, even in better than those in Estonia. But Estonia started from scratch, actually. And it's very, very easy when you start a system from scratch to adopt to the, what is available now at the time that they, they start. We have layers of history of laws since there are a number of royal decrees from the king uh, that are still in, in, in place. It's very difficult to change, because then when you have to change that, Changing one old rule, which has a limited impact, uh, has an opportunity cost very high compared to the to to what you must decide now for an urgency, an urgent matter that you have to deal now. So you you, you first deal with the urgent things, and then no time is left to correct the small things from the past. <clears throat> then how can policymaker propose, discuss, adopt, implement the right framework? What is right? Who decides what is right? The other Joe, La Casalinga di Boguera, decides what is right at the next iteration. Meaning that the next iteration, you're going to be re-elected or not re-elected based on her perception that comes from the media, the information she gets from the media that manipulates her perception of what you have done. That is right. No hard facts. Well, I don't want to enter into Italian politics right now, but there are a, num a, a significant number of, of uh, uh, well, I'm just going to say one thing. 
Take, for example, immigration in Italy. Italy is the oldest country in the world but Japan. So it's the second oldest country in the world. We make one son per couple. So every two people, we generate a new one, just one. So basically, the next generation is going to be half as our generation. This means that basically it's unsustainable. Anything is nothing is sustainable. Welfare, etc. Nothing is sustainable. We need to bring in immigration. This is very clear. If you look at the numbers, it's obvious that we have to do that. And then, if you would act, act, act accordingly, you would build a set of rules in order to attract immigration. But when you tell to Casalinga di Voghera that you need to bring in an immigrants, it's very easy to tell her that these immigrants come to steal your job, to they're responsible for all ugly things that happen in the city, it's always them, etc. Media reinforce this, the parties, and of course, because that generates audience, no? Rest, political wrestling generates audience. So what is right? Right is not tied to, tied to to the numbers, it's not tied to, to the figures, it's not tied, it's very difficult, even if you have the numbers, it's very difficult to interpret them. What is the speed required of the necessary feedback loops in measuring this effect of the new rules, and how can they be updated efficiently? Feedback, feedback, what's the kind of feedback that a politician gets? There, there, there is a recent, uh, uh, paper uh, that explained how things uh, on social network tend to lead that some minority options, minority uh, opinions, are majority opinions because uh, of, of, of feedbacks in the representation of, uh, of the information. How do politicians get feedback? They get it from, from those uh, from those people who are most active in their in their community, in their in their uh, in their base, in their political base, but that's not necessarily true. And how and, and how do we get feedback? We get feedback through um, surveys. So we ask to people, "What do you think about this?" But people lie in in in, in surveys, and and then the data you get it's uh, it's not very reliable. And you get the data from uh, statistical analysis, but that is not enough to, that captures the single frame, it's not enough to see the picture. So it's very complicated to have good feedback. But then, what is the feedback that you need? Is the feedback in order to do the right things? And the right things is if I can be re-elected or not. So it's, or, yes, it's, if my group can be re-elected or not. Are the benefits of the new platforms often operating on the edge or actually outside? Who decides what's a benefit? Is immigration a benefit? Is uh, Uber a benefit? Airbnb is, is Airbnb a benefit? Who decides what, what's good? How, how, how can we take those decisions? So even the problem is very hardly, hard to, to, to define. There is no right answer. There is no such thing as a right answer. There cannot be. What are we maximizing? There are different things that we maximize. The, the functions that we are maximizing are different. The idea, the general idea is that through democracy we maximize public good. The best things for everyone. Then really you are, you, you, as a politician, well, I'm not a politician, I'm a computer scientist. So I just happen to be in the chamber of deputies, but never done politics in my life. So I'm just observing things. Uh, you do the interest of your constituency, or at least that's what you tell. Then, more closely, if you if you look more closely, you do your, the interest of your power group, and the power group is the people that stand behind you and give you the power in order for you to make things. And indeed, the synchronization of the issue between the group. It's very com at this level. At this level, communication is almost broadcast or narrowcast. At this level, it's it becomes peer-to-peer -peer communication within the group, and it's very uh, and the and the coordination is very complex. It's very hard, and then 
there you need to have a set of values because you cannot do micromanagement on the issues that arise day by day. So at this, at this level, you need to share value. Then, of course, there is the interest of staff. It's interesting when you see a politician that moves from a very important role to a secondary level role, you discover that all, the st all of his staff then suddenly becomes uh, part of a board member of a certain company or, I mean, the interest of staff comes before the interest of the group, which comes before the interest of constituency. Yeah? And uh, at the very basis of the, this Maslow, inverted Maslow pyramid, there is the self-interest of the candidate. And it's not, it's not, uh, it's not negative. You, uh, I mean, I want to be clear on this. It's not that you are interested in re-election for your own sake. It's because you really believe, I've, I've, all politicians I've met, they're, except perhaps two, uh, they are not really interested in, in, in being re-elected just for themselves. But that's the core issue. Because if you are not re-elected, then you cannot do the rest. So eight, perhaps the degrees varies from 51% to 99%. But uh, a portion of the, his interest is to be re-elected so that he can then do other things. So a self-interest is not, is not selfish in, in a certain way. Then there is an issue of, of, of term. The right thing to do and the feedback. In looking at what term? Now, medium term, or someday in the future? And because this varies, of course. Take, for example, Mr. Obama. In his, in his, in his first campaign, he said that he was going to promote a law about net neutrality in his campaign. He, st he started by saying that was one key point of his first campaign. Did he, did, it? did he do it? No, he didn't. Then he ran for the second mandate, for the second uh, period. And did he do it? No, until he was going to run out of office because Running for uh, uh, pushing forward net neutrality at the very beginning of the first uh, period of his government would have precluded him in order to do a number of other things that because he would have lost the interest of some power groups. So the right thing to do needs to be put in perspective with the conditions that allow you to do other things. He did not do the right thing as he said that he was going to do. And he waited until having finished, almost finished his term. And uh, OK, I think I made the point. So it's very complicated, very easy to ask these questions. And, but then the, the, the answer is, is very complicated, because the, and behind this question, there is a world of issues. Then, what is a law? <laughs> this is my definition of a law. It's one of the products of, because there are many other byproducts. When, when, when I entered the Chamber of Deputies, I thought that, well, things are very logical. You need to do, there is this problem, there is this data, there is this obvious solution. You just go and convince people. They tell you it's OK. You go, you vote, and then you have, a, you have a bill passed. And that's not so. That's not so because it may conflict with some short-term, long-term interest of the other people you talk to, of the other member of the parliament you talk to, because uh, uh, it may conflict with the uh, interest of some power group, of constituency, etc. You might discover that what you think is correct, there is some reason why you don't want to do it. Uh, for example, uh, we started a group in, in the Chamber of Deputies, uh, uh, a study committee on, 
and, and we wrote this Internet Bill of Rights, which was formed by representative, representatives of all political parties in, in, in the Italian parliament. After having written this, uh, this, this, this Bill of Rights, uh, we want to have it approved by the parliament, by the whole parliament, as a, a, a resolution for the government so that the government uh, must uh, adopt what's written in, 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 the, in the Bill of Rights uh, and, and form the subsequent laws that talk about the internet compatible with the Bill of Rights. And having this Bill of Rights been made by all the political groups with all representatives, and so it was a really horizontal thing, we try to make, we are trying, we are now trying to make this resolution unanimous. And uh, I was collecting the signature of the various members of the parliament, of the various representatives of the group on this, and I, re I, I received one signature of one group uh, and some about six hours later, the one of the signature of the firmatari, I don't know how to say it in English, of the people who signed, withdrew his, his signature because of something that has nothing to do with the specific Bill of Rights resolution. It's something completely different that's related to something that is happening in, in another Italian region, but has some political consequences. So because of the interest of the constituency in the short term, he just did not withdraw his signature, his group withdrew the signature from Bill of Rights on some very specific issue. So things evolve. After staying there for two and a half years, uh, I just stopped. And I, I'm, I'm not, I, I ref, I'm not rifiutato, uh, is wrong. Uh, rassegnato. How do you say rassegnato in English? Yeah. Nobody knows. OK. Is that, huh? is that difficult? Yeah, that's difficult. I mean. I'm not trying harder anymore to understand wh why something happens and what are all the dependencies and the ties, etc. Because the computational cost is too high because you cannot take in account all the variables for all of the members of the parliament, all of the interest group, all of the possible situation in the environment, short term, long term, local, remote. I mean, I, I take a quantistic approach. Things can be or cannot be, and you do not discover until the the, the wave function collapses, and then what what has happened is the reality. So you just need to wait and see, and that's what's happened. And that's how. So having the idea that somebody has the power to deterministically, based on data. An interpretation of data and defining the, to define the right thing to do and do it, it simply doesn't happen because it's not possible to define right, it's not possible to get the data, it's not possible to define well the domain because interest changes, because the process itself uh, it's it's quantistic. So it just happens. And it's one of the products. Sometimes is not even the most important product. Sometimes, sometimes the, the most important product of the process is the communication that the Casalinga de Bugera receive, receives about the law. Uh, there are some laws which we know from start that will not have any effect that are not going to be applicable, that if they are applicable, it's, it's just peanuts. But in, in the mind of the Casalinga di Voghera, it seems that they are of I mean, huge successes. So it's very complicated. As a matter of fact, this is no new thing, because if you take Santa Agustin of Hippo, uh, he said that he, he divided uh, the, the, the the knowledge in, in, two, uh, in two categories, scientia and sapientia. Scientia is, deals with the things you have to do in order to obtain something. And sapientia is why you have to do it. It's 
and then they are separate things. They are separate things. The idea behind these questions is that politics is driven by scientia. Reality is that's not even driven by sapientia. Okay, there are a number of other factors that influence the process. So this is the main reason why it's difficult to implement the right thing, because there is no such thing as a right thing, because the world is extremely complicated. Okay, that was it. Thank you. Questions? Thank you, Stefano. Hey, Excuse me, hey. I'm sure everybody or some one of you may have questions. I'm sure many of you can relate to the situation in many international grounds. So does anybody have a question for Stefano? I'm not going to take any questions from him. <laughs> what about the new technology? Do you think that network and technology, network and media can help this process? They can be helpful tool for the normal Joe or they have technology of power? That's my provocative assumption here. Just a question for David too. Um, democratic process? I don't think that technology is of really any help. Okay. When I mean technology, I mean things that might come in the future, not what we have now. Because, of course, uh, ways to inform people who want to be informed, that's okay. Ways to gather ideas, it's good, and perhaps something gets into a bill, but that's marginal with respect of the whole things of set of things that is going to happen. Uh, meaning, it's not that if we start a public consultation on certain things, that is going to change dramatically the output. It, can, it, it might change some details, because if, if the political process has already agreed that there is going to be a certain kind of output in a certain direction is because you already have the majority for that. And once you do the public consultation, you change the details, which are important, important to some small of parts of people, but not for the general public good. Uh, for example, when we wrote the Internet Bill of Rights, we ran a public consultation and we got a lot of feedbacks. And some of them went into the into into the Internet Bill of Rights, mm -hmm. but none of that the, the, none of them. Uh, there was somebody that was proposing to delete the the, the Internet Bill of Rights. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, none of them really changed the, the whole structure. Some details might might, might be changed, but but the whole design stays in place. Of course, it's a good mean. The technology is a good means to inform people of what you are doing. But the number of people who really wants to be informed is very, very, very little, very small. Because informing oneself is, is, is very complicated. It's hard. You have to study. There are a number of things that you need to read, uh, an a huge amount of data that you need to, to learn. It's very complicated. Uh, I'm not going to enter some, some example, but there are some public campaigns, very, very popular, that are simply based on no fact. Because learning the fact is complicated. Going to the to the source and interpreting the data is very difficult. So media is then on influencing the people. Yes, this can be a, uh, this can be a problem. This can be a problem. A problem. Well, I started by asking who of you think that democracy is the best system. What happens? So. We are, talking, uh, we are talking now to each other, and we are talking through the air. And the air is neutral in the meaning that is not discriminate the message I am giving to you, to, to Lorenzo or, or to David. It's the same message, because the air does not discriminate. Once our communication is mediated by a number of intermediaries, hardware, firmware, software, platforms, etc., all of these players in the chain have the, the possibility of having discrimination of the message. And personal data comes into this 
in order to be able to do a mass discrimination, a mass customization, a mass personalization of discrimination and lead people to decide for one thing of the, or the other. Is that democracy? When you inter so we have, if we like the idea of democracy, technology poses a risk to democracy because through manipulation of, uh, of the communication, using personal data in order to, to personalize, to massively personalize, ma doing mass customization of the message, that can be a risk for democracy. If, if we are, uh, of course, if, uh, but four or five of you think that democracy is not a good uh, idea, so <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to discuss about this, but th that's why I'm against uh, a number of things, because I, I think that democracy is a terrible system, but there is not, no one, but not, not a better one. And I even understand that uh, perhaps democracy is not the most, if, if the function we are trying to maximize is uh, economic efficiency in the short to medium term, as I asked before, what is the function that we try to maximize? So if the function we are trying to maximize is economic, uh, economic effect effectiveness, economic output in the short to medium term, I think that authoritarian countries are in a better position in order to benefit to for of technology advances. So thank you, Stefano. Thanks to you.